What's up, guys? It's your boy, Barca Boy103. Today, we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. We do have some big topics to discuss. First, we have some advancements, or maybe not so much advancement, on the Mikel Merino transfer and how Real Sociedad could be interested in some of our players to reduce the price. How we're already having targets for next summer. 2025, Deco is targeting Florian Verse, and we have all the details of that potential operation. Updates on the transfer of Xavi Simons, which is now cooling down following the arrival of Hansi Flick. Players leaving Barcelona, apparently. Ramon Planes, at Etihad Sporting Director, is very interested in signing Kunde and Arujo. We have some big renewal updates on Arujo as well. Update on the future of Eric Garcia. Paco Barca being left out of Spain's squad for the Euros. How does that affect Barcelona? And Javier Tebas confirming that Barcelona are very close to returning to the 1-1 one, one rule. Before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes in this video. Be very much appreciated. And also, if you're new, make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Now, before we get into this video, this video is sponsored by LU Soccer. LU Soccer is one of the best versatile replica jersey websites on the market. They have a variety of different items from different clubs. They have the authentic version, training, women's, NBA. They've got basically everything, football related and even other sports if you're a fan of that. Any kind of kit you're looking for, retro, current season, even previous season, they have it as you can see on the screen. And you know what they sent me? They sent me the home kit for the season. You're probably thinking a oh, home kit, boring. But they sent me the long sleeve version, which of course is very rare to get the real edition for it because they sell it so quickly and they're so expensive as well. But they got it. The quality, of course, absolutely fantastic. They even have the diamond on the badge there which you can hopefully see from the glare there so details to perfection the quality is fantastic and of course if you do go and get yourself an item make sure you use my discount code bb10 you can see where you can do it on the screen barca boy 10 bb10 gets you 10 percent off your order and also if you make an order and you record yourself unboxing it and upload it to youtube they will give you a kit for free it's a life hack, so go on the website, get what you want, well, it can be one item, seven items, 20 items, two items, does not matter, record yourself, you know, unboxing it from the packaging, upload it to YouTube, send them the link, and they will give you any kit you want for free. So what are you waiting for? Hit the top link in the description down below and check out LU Soccer today. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours. First, we have an update on the big story around Barcelona over the past 48 hours or so, and that is around Mikel Marino. Now, Gabriel Sanz and Motoportiva actually came out saying that Barcelona see Mikel Marino as an interior, and he's not a priority. Despite recent reports, no contact has been made with the player or Real Sociedad yet. So he's kind of saying, slow your horses. Nothing's happening yet, and Barcelona see him as an interior and not as a pivot. Well, the original report did state that he's not coming in as a pivot. He was going to come in as, you know, a player who can play in the double pivot. He's not going to be coming in as, you know, a pivot signing. Of course, we were firstly interested. Next day, we're lining up a 25 million euro bid plus 5 million euros in variables. But now we're kind of getting the tranquilo calma from the media. Of course, with Mikel Marino now being officially selected for the Spanish national team, which he was going to be anyways, it's going to be difficult to get this deal done, you know, pre-Euros. We're looking probably at one Spain get knocked out maybe afterwards. But again, having the interest there, keeping, letting his entourage know about it. Keep in mind, his agent is the same agent as Pau Kubarsi. So the relationship is already at an all-time high. Now, from that fee that we talked about yesterday, 25 plus 5, that can be reduced. Because according to Sport, Barcelona could use some players in the operation with Macal Fey and Pablo Torre being led by Real Sociedad and it's not ruled out they could enter negotiations for Mikel Moreno. I wouldn't mind including any of these two players in the deal if the club really want to go out there and get and get the Mikel Moreno. All I would say is include something from the player. So a buyback option, percent of a future sale, uh, obtain something in their future. Don't just give them up completely. That's all I would say. So if you want, if in the end you decide to get rid of Torre, Mikel Fey, I wouldn't mind, you know, doing this as well to reduce the price from our perspective on, you know, an operation that you can get for even cheaper than it already is. Again, Marino has one year left on his contract. So we'll wait and see how things do turn out. Again, this will not get done, I don't think, even before the Euros ends. But again, the interest is there. And once the interest is there, it's kind of hard for that to go away. But we'll see how things get do, you know, dictate. But we'll wait and see how things are going to be dictated over the next few days. But a midfielder who Barcelona have slowed down their pursuit for, it is Xavi 
Simon, some more concrete news following the appointment of Hansi Flick. Matteo Morito has come out saying that Xavi Simon's to Barcelona is cold. Hansi Flick has other priorities. Who are these priorities, man? I, tell me the names. Give me the names because I guarantee you Xavi Simon is going to be better than all of them. You get, you're probably wondering, oh, Barcelona, you're a nostalgic merchant. Why do you want Xavi Simon? Blah, blah, blah. You're, you're, you're right a little bit. I do like to see, you know, La Masia players come up and succeed. Also, them, you know, being all friends and them wanting to succeed with Barcelona altogether. I kind of like that story. But also, the operation. You're getting him on a low. If we're going out there and spending money on him, I'll back down. Fully agree. If Hans does not want him, don't spend money on him. No problem with that whatsoever. The fact that he's coming in on loan is going to cost you nothing for an absolutely brilliant quality player who's super, super versatile as well i would rather bring in chavis simons on a loan than go and spend 20 million on Mikel Moreno. of course Mikel Moreno has more longevity and all that sort of stuff i'd rather take the risk with chavis simons on a loan deal see what psg asks for him next summer and go from there he is that good of course positional wise you know in the double pivot can chavis simons really play there i think he could with all on side of you know really strong uh, uh you know partner but it would be, you know, a bit difficult. I think Miguel Moreno does suit that a bit better. But we cannot be passing up on someone like this. I still firmly believe 100% if we are in the race, we do present an offer on loan and PG accepted. And Travis Simone gets to pick where he wants to go. Bayern Munich, Man United, uh, Barcelona, Real Madrid, wherever. I'm confident beyond belief he'll choose Barcelona. It's just now down to whether or not we're going to actually put ourselves in the race or not. So we'll see if things change. Again, he has other priorities. It's cold. It's not really dead in the water quite yet hence the caption it's almost there pretty much because if there's other priorities he will then of course end up choosing where he wants to go but now that his decision has been postponed to the to after the euros that could benefit barcelona a little bit so wait and see how things do turn out but for now barcelona not as strongly interested in chavi simons as they were a few weeks ago now, an option for Barcelona in the midfield that is still alive a little bit, of course, is the transfer of Joshua Kimmich. If we don't get the Mikel Moreno deal over the line, whether he, you know, renews with Sociedad or goes somewhere else, we're back to square one with Kimmich. Now, Sky Germany have come out saying that Bayern Munich will sell Joshua Kimmich this summer if there is an acceptable offer. They've listed a, quite a few players. I think they said Kimmich, Komen, that's why I put Komen here because, you know, we've been linked with him. Nabri, Mazwari. And the lid. All these players from the Bayern's perspective, they will leave, they will let go if a decent offer comes in because all their contracts are expiring. It's not like with us, with you know, Arujo, Pedri, Gavi will accept you know the highs of offers only if you want to sell. It's kind of like the Rafinha situation, maybe a little bit less with Barcelona. We want to keep Rafinha. You have to make a really, really good offer for us to let him go because you know he's not really an untouchable player, but he has a price. With these players that like I just already listed. They have a price, and the price isn't too bad because, again, Bayern Munich are not in the best situation contractually point of view. So, keep your eyes on it. Again, that means that Bayern Munich are open to selling. They will sell, of course, if needs be. They're not too worried about, you know, losing a big player like Kimmich, like Komen, like Nabri, Dilit, Mazawadi as well. But, again, those players haven't been linked with Barcelona. I'm just listening to them so you guys get the general consensus of the situation of Bayern. So, keep your eyes on it. They all have a price, whether it's going to be $40 million, $50 million, uh, 60 potentially the prices are there it's just not down to negotiation if of course Barcelona do go ahead and proceed now despite the fact that the 2024 summer transfer window has not even begun or even open yet we're already talking about the summer of 2025 this is Barcelona for you we have been linked with Florian Wirtz as a potential top target for next summer not this summer next summer 2025 Fernando Poto a Mundo Portivo came out saying that Florian Verts is Deco and Barcelona's dream. He is the one the club would bet the strongest on in 2025 if they are financially capable. They are working with the conviction that the ability to sign big players should be able to be recovered again. Deco has been following Verts for a long time now and has extensive knowledge of him. He has uh, closely been following him at Bayern Leverkusen, also due to Tap Soba's presence when he was his agent. Interesting there. Barcelona have gathered information about Verts and believe that he will be staying at the Leverkusen uh, for next season. Of course, alongside Xavi Alonso as well. Influential figures at Barcelona have a good relationship with Bayern Munich, uh, Bayern Leverkusen sporting director as well, Simon Rothfuss. And Hansi Flick also knows Verts very well with his time in Germany. Uh, 
Flirts is a brilliant player. He's absolutely fantastic, and I feel like low-key, he's going to have a very, very good Euros if Germany go far. I still don't think Germany will go too far, but if they do end up, you know, honestly, people, people say they're going to be in the final and semifinals, so if they do get that far, I think Verse will be a very, very key player in that aspect. The issue is that next summer, he's going to cost you 80 to 100 million Euros. Uh... Even though he has one year less on his deal, I think that's going to be the price set for him. Very similar to what happened with Kai Havertz a few years ago with Bayern Leverkusen. They, the Bayern Leverkusen are, are a club that sell very, very well. Um, during that summer, though, you never know. I think, you know, Laporte is going to be running for presidency again. He might spend that big money on a, on a player like Erling Haaland. With Lewandowski going to be leaving next summer, most likely. Uh, you want to have that big marquee signing in the summer. I think Holland could be a good shout as well with him, have, of course, having that release clause in his contract and his contract winding down with Man City. I wouldn't put this as, you know, set in stone per se. We already have a stock midfield. Again, if we sign Chavis Simons, he comes in and plays well. That could change things as well. But it's been very, very clear for a long time that Barcelona do love fully inverse. And just the thought of him playing with Gavi and Pedri gives me freaking goosebumps top 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 player but wait and see what the situation of the of the squad is during that point as well and also financially what we do have in stock and what we do need to invest in as well so we'll wait and see how things do turn out but again Deco and Barcelona dream of signing for inverse next summer and he will most likely be a strong strong target for us Let's now discuss the players that have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. First up, Frankie de Jong is attracting interest from Bayern Munich, who of course freaking selling half their squads, as I already mentioned, with Bild reporting that Bayern Munich want to sign Frankie de Jong this summer, but Hansi Flick wants to keep him at Barcelona. Of course, this will all stem down to Frankie de Jong's renewal. If he renews, he stays, everyone's happy, but if he refuses to renew, Barcelona will look to sell him, and Bayern Munich are there as suitors again by me do have a big midfield target list that came out i think like i saw uh, onana on there uh chavi simons was on there as well uh, i cannot remember off the top of my head but you know they're interested in a lot of midfielders this summer they do want to really you know stock up in that position which they lacked uh, the previous season so we will wait and see uh again we're not going to know any, anything about this until after the year especially with frankie young out there now training and trying to recover from his ankle injury um again it comes down to his renewal so if he renews he'll stay everyone of course will be happy and you know we can we, we we move but if he does not want to renew and the renewal falls through completely Bayern Munich will be there in the background ready to offer um to make an offer should I say for Frankie de Jong and for Barcelona as well so keep your eyes on that interest from Bayern Munich as we do wait for more news on Frankie's renewal now, there have been some, you know, Saudi Arabia links coming about, which you'll probably hear a lot about uh, this summer. And it's coming in from Luis Rojo from Marca. So I would say it is maybe somewhat concrete, but I wouldn't say it's advanced or anything's going to happen whatsoever. He came out saying that El Etihad, of course, a team of N'Golo Kante and Benzema, their sporting director is Ramon Planas, the former sporting director of Barcelona during the Bartomeu era. And he's come out saying, not him, not Robin Blanas, but Luis Rojo, came out saying that El Etihad want to sign Jules Kunde. And he also mentioned how there is interest as well in Ronald Arujo. Again, I mean, I'm interested in buying Barcelona. Does that mean I'm going to go out there and buy the club? No. They can be interested all they want. What they have to do is put an offer that will tempt Barcelona and tempt the player as well if needs be. For me, for me personally, Kunde is... It. Is an untouchable player, but for the reality is that's not the case for Barcelona. I think Barcelona would sell Kunde again in the high 80s, um, like between 75 and 90 million. I think that's where Barcelona's sweet spot is for Jules Kunde. You pay 60 for him. He's definitely risen in value. He's been the La Liga team of the season, the two seasons that he was at Barcelona. He's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, so that's where the price point I would be. Of course, Saudi Arabia, they got the money. Uh, can they convince the player? That's going to be the question as well. Uh, so we'll wait and see how things do turn out in that regards. But in regards to Arujo, there is some news. Mateo Marito has come out saying that Barcelona and Arujo's camp continue to negotiate for a contract renewal, but there's no agreement as of right now. Following Vincent Comey's arrival at Bayern Munich, they have gone very cold regarding Arujo. They have other priorities and plans. But if Manchester United sign Thomas Tuchel and sack Eric Ten Hag, maybe something can happen there. But this is, of course, a hypothetical situation at the moment. So... We knew that Bayern Munich super interested. Two bids came in in January. Both were rejected by Barcelona. And that was because of Thomas Tuchel's huge admiration for Arujo. With company coming in, again, like I already mentioned twice now in this video, they're focused on their midfield. They don't really want to, you know, halter any big major movements in the center back department. They don't want to invest, you know, all their money there. So now you're probably sitting here wondering, is that too much interest for Arujo? Of course, a, 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 every club in the world will take it, but going out there and spending the money on him 
is something completely different. Now, of course, if United get Thomas Tuchel, watch out for that. They United need center backs. They are they got no one. They got Lafayette Martinez and a bunch of other twats. That's it. So I do hope Martinez center back partnership. That's kind of dirty as well. So keep your eyes on that. But I think again. Until post Cup America, we're not going to hear anything about Idaho. I'm still fairly confident that a renewal can happen now. And with this interest not being there on the table, Idaho can use this as leverage. Things can definitely, you know, benefit the side of Barcelona. Again, he's been promised a salary increase. He will be getting a salary increase in this contract renewal. Just now, down, hopefully, to fine tuning the details and finding an agreement. So keep your eyes on that. Again, Al Etihad apparently are interested in Idaho, but if you're in the peak of your prime, uh, you know, third captain of Barcelona, you're going to really get a jump shift for more money in Saudi Arabia. I don't know. Same thing kind of goes with Jose Kunde as well. You're, you know, starting for Barcelona. You're, you know, earning decent money as well. I think Kunde's on well over uh, 100,000 euros a week. Probably earning around 150,000 euros per week. Why jump ship? Again, if the money really talks to you that much, then see you later. Didn't know you whatsoever. So, we'll wait and see how things turn out in regards to this interest in Saudi Arabia. Right now, I would say very much in the beginning stage, just general interest. And I'll we'll wait and see how things turn out with your uh, renewal of Ronald Arujo. Now, a player that's very much most likely out the exit door as things currently stand, but could end up staying because he's pushing to stay. It is Eric Garcia, something I feared a lot. Gabriel Sanz of Mundo Portivo came out saying that Hansi Flick will soon meet with Deco to address squad needs, including reducing personnel in the center back position. Of course, that meeting will be happening either Monday or Tuesday, somewhere around there. Eric Garcia, who excelled on loan at Girona as La Liga's highest scoring defender with five headed goals, hopes to stay at Barcelona. However, Girona are keen to have him back due to his significant contribution and presence passing, making his return a challenge, but possible mission for them. So Eric Garcia wants to stay. Well, I mean, to be honest, I don't blame these players. They're playing for this right here. Best club in the I can't believe I've never done that. I had this flag up for like what, four months now. I never just... I should probably do that more often. Anyways, anyways. With Eric Garcia, again, there's no need to keep him. You have Christensen, Gunde, Arujo, Mikal Fe, Inigo. Options galore. Galore. And I think he's at that point where he's not too much of a top talent to really consider, um, you know, us pursuing him and us really giving him a chance in the first team. It's his time to go. It's a time for Barcelona as well to cash out. Again, he came for free during COVID. Pure profit for financial fair play as well. It'll be beneficial for us. And I think he should go out there and play Champions League football with Girona. You know, he, it looks like he's at home there. He's in the same city as Catalan. So no need to move and buy a new house and a new apartment. Stuff like that. Just going to do an extra 10 minute drive down the road. That's pretty much it. Again, if we have... If, if maybe we sell someone at center back, like an Arujo, a Kunde with that interest from Saudi Arabia. That's the only way I can see Eric Garcia staying. If other players at in this position end up leaving who we do prefer and who are better than Eric Garcia so we'll wait and see um we'll see what Hansi Flick decides he probably just wants to see him in training for a bit so we probably will see him in preseason around July the 10th so I think from that point on things will become more clear but again he will be going to the Olympics probably I would say for Spain as well so we'll wait and see I think start out with Eric Garcia's future but right now apparently the player wants to stay but Hansi Flick and Deco are yet to make a final decision on his future Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 24 hours. First up, some surprising and shock news in regards to the Spanish national team Euro squad selection. The squad was officially announced yesterday. Fermin Lopez makes the squad, so congratulations to him and hopefully he does well uh, at the Euros. Balco Barsi left out! Unbelievable! To be fair, as a Barcelona fan, I'm, I'm happy that's less football for him, but... For him as a player, that might be, you know, daunting because he's been exceptional since January, but he was left out by De La Fuente. Now, following being left out, Tony Juan Marti came out saying that the players of the Spanish national team are very surprised by the absence of Cobarsi and the group they assured that Pau would be, a, you know, in the selection in the Spanish national team. Some even say they're unable to understand this decision, but Luis De La Fuente's team justifies Cobarsi's absence by citing his desire to avoid overloading the youngster they compared to Pedri's instance uh, in intense uh, season a couple of years ago so the reason why the main reason why Spain left him out was because they didn't want to overload him with minutes and also because Henrico Desim Kobe came out saying that Parco Barsi will be part of the Spain squad for the Olympic Games so he's gonna go to the Olympics July 26th to I think August 10th somewhere around there he'll start for Spain there for sure and then he'll try and win uh, gold out there which does mean that Paco Barsi will miss preseason 
with Barcelona. He'll be there at the start when we come back on June, the, July the 10th, you know, depending on what date uh, Hansi Flick selects. He'll probably start the preliminary preseason prep, and then he'll be off to Spain for the Olympics, so no preseason for him. Probably won't even be for the Juan Gap, of course, depending on how far Spain goes. We could even see a Paco Barca, Eric Garcia center back partnership for Spain at the Olympics, but very, very interesting selection. We'll wait and see whether or not Lemin Yamal for Min Lopez go to the Olympics. Hopefully that won't be the case. They will be going to the Euros. Uh, Lemin Yamal probably going to be starting there week in, week out with um, for Min Lopez, obviously someone off the bench. Maybe he could earn a starting spot like he did at Barcelona. I don't know. I don't know. But Paco Barca being left out is the big news, I would say, around Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Some shocking news, but definitely I would say positive from the Barcelona point of perspective. Maybe a bit neutral from Kubarsi thinking that, oh, I want to go play in the Euros. I'm good enough. I've done well. But then again, don't want to overload myself. And again, it was kind of, you know, an executive decision. So we'll see how things do turn out. But, you know, wishing Paul Kubarsi all the best at the Olympics. But again, this, is, this does mean that he will miss the entire preseason with Barcelona this summer in America. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is in regards to Barcelona returning to the 1-1 rule. Yet again, there's been some weird news around the uh, club. They that, oh, we need both Barca Division and the Nike deal to get back to one rule. I'm not going to talk to you guys about this because I'm telling you right now, that is not the case. The president of La Liga, the one who's put in this freaking 1-1 rule, Javier Tebes has been speaking to the media and he did confirm yet again that Barcelona is on the right track and I think that they will end up returning to the 1-1 rule by the end of this month. So again, everything is well in place. Just got to get that Nike deal announced and over the line, which I think will be happening over the next few days, definitely before or on Thursday of this week on June the 20th when we announce the uh, new home kit and uh, reveal a new home kit for next season. If we can get Barca Division over the line as well by the end of this month, that would also be great as well. Just to get that extra, you know, uh, fair play margin, which is what we need. So we'll see how things do turn out. But again, the president of La Liga confirming that he's very confident that Barcelona will return to the 1-1 rule for financial fair play by the end of this month. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course in the comments down below. Let me hear your thoughts on everything. We discussed the transfer of Mikel Moreno this summer. Are you in or out of it? Thoughts on Xavi Simon's interest cooling down. Thoughts on Fulham Verts coming in next summer. And your thoughts on El Etihad's interest in our two star defenders. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca. Barca, 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 Barca.